Hello, I'm Fatma Salim and let's talk about memory. What do you ever uh, think? How do we store information? And do you ever think how do we retrieve information? What is basically memory? And what is the main processes and stages of memory? How we remember things? So today this topic will make you an understanding regarding what is memory. Memory is a term given to the structures and processes involved in storage and subsequent retrieval of information. It is essential to all our lives. Without a memory of the past, we cannot operate in present or think about future. Woodward and Marcos said, memory is mental power which consists in learning, retaining and remembering what has previously been learned. Macklin says memory is the process of maintaining information over time. Sternberg in 1999 said memory means by which we draw on our past experiences in order to use this information in the present. So here we conclude that we would not be able to remember what we did yesterday, what we have done today, or what we plan to do tomorrow. Without memory, we couldn't learn anything. When we take, when a lay person talks about memory, it makes him or her in, enable to understand that it is our ability to perceive information through our senses from the environment, store, retain, and when needed, we can recall information. Memory is involved in processing vast amounts of information. This information takes many different forms. For example, images, sounds, or air meanings. When we memory in psychology, there are stages of memory, there is a procedure of memory, and there are types of memory. Memory as stages refers to three main stages, sensory memory, short-term or working memory, long-term memory. When we talk about procedure, procedure refers to encode, store and retrieve. And when we talk about types, we have the main two types, explicit and implicit memory. And furthermore, explicit memory is divided into more two types, episodic and semantic. We will be describing and explaining uh, these terms later on move towards the process of memory process of memory refers to encoding storage and retrieval memory encoding refers to when information comes into our memory system from sensory output or input it needs to be changed into a form that the system can system can cope with so that it can be stored there are three main ways in which information can be encoded, visual, acoustic, and semantic. Visual refers to the pictures, acoustic refers to the sounds, and semantic refers to meanings. For example, how do you remember a telephone number you have looked up into the phone book? If you can see it, well, then you are using visual coding. But if you are repeating, you are using acoustic coding, that is sound. Now come towards the storage. Storage concerns the na nature of memory stores. That is, where the information is stored, how long the information lasts for duration, and how much can be stored at any time capacity. And what kind of information, information is held. The way we store information affects the way we retrieve it. There has been a significant amount of research regarding the difference between short-term memory and long-term memory. However, storage is basically latent and always available for use. Memory retrieval refers, for, refers to getting information out of storage. If we can't remember something, it may be because we are unable to retrieve it. When we are asked to retrieve something from memory, the differences between short-term and long-term memory become very clear. So retrieval basically refers to using available knowledge in cognition and action. 
the state the stages of storage is the heart of the memory there are basically three stages of storage sensory memory working memory or short term memory and long term memory sensory memory it processes information gathered through your five senses it holds information for an extremely brief period of time less than a second after the original stimulus has stopped it is the shortest term element of memory it is processed approximately 200 to 500 milliseconds after the item is perceived short term memory or working memory it holds information you are actively thinking about it lasts for a very brief time less than a minute and can hold up to seven plus or minus two pieces of information at once the capacity of working memory can be increased by chunking for example you can uh, remember words phone numbers or addresses by breaking down into pieces Take an example of telephone number of KFC. You can break down into piece while remembering their telephone number for placing an order. Peterson and Peterson in 1959 measured the duration of short term memory by manipulating rehearsal and he stated that the duration of working memory is about 20 seconds. And short term memory can be moved to long term memory through rehearsal. Otherwise, it is re ready to decay. Long term memory. When we come to long term memory, it holds information for long periods of time, even permanently. It seemingly can hold an unlimited amount of information. Long term memory can store much larger quantities of information for potentially unlimited duration. Now there are two types of long term memory explicit or declarative implicit or procedural explicit memories are those experiences that can be in intentionally and consciously remembered it is knowledge or experiences that can be consciously remembered such as facts that are episodes or events explicit memory can be further subcategorized either as episodic or semantic memories. Episodic memories refers to the first-hand experience that you have had. For example, episodes or events in your life. For example, you may remember your 16th birthday party or your first saucer game. Semantic memory refers to the knowledge of facts and concepts about the world. For example, you may remember the names of presidents or how to multiple the numbers for example 2 into 2 is equals to 4 implicit memory implicit memory refers to the knowledge that we cannot consciously access it is remembering without awareness for example you may remember how to ride a bike or walk but it is difficult to explain how you do it now we are coming towards the memory processing Automatic and effortful. Automatic refers to implicit memories. Effortful refers to explicit. Implicit memories are also known as procedural or non-declarative, whereas explicit memories are known as declarative. They are processed in hippocampus and frontal lobes, whereas implicit memories are processed in cerebellum and in and basal ganglia. They are mostly referred to space, time, frequency motor and cognitive skills and classical conditioning whereas explicit memories refers to facts and general knowledge personally experienced events dual track of processing explicit and implicit memories are just as they are explicit or effortful processing and implicit or automatic processing implicit Memories, you can also say that some memories are formed without going through all the Atkinson shift in stages. These are implicit memory. The one that we are not fully aware of, thus don't declare or talk about. But 
we have been talking about explicit and declarative memories. These are the facts and experiences we have consciously gained. Now we're going to have a quick summary of the topic. This model presents how memory works, all in all. An individual gathers information through senses from environment and it moves towards sensory memory, which has a capacity of 3 to 7 units and duration is 0 0.5 to 3 seconds. If not focused or fully attentive, att attention, then it, the material is being forgotten and never move towards working memory or short term memory. Information moved towards short term memory remains for 5 to 15 seconds without rehearsal and its capacity is to retain 7 to 9 checks. If not rehearsed, maintained and elaborated, the, the information doesn't move towards long term memory, either it is being forgotten or decayed. Information moved towards long term memory is a meaningful information and can easily be retrieved. Its capacity is infinite and duration is permanent. Hope this audio and presentation help you in understanding what is memory. Thank you.